Okay, so we're going to talk about properties of these operations. What are the four operations? Division, multiplication, and subtracting. Um, wrong. Division, <laughs> multiplication, plusing, and subtracting. Yes. Please say it correctly. <laughs> okay. All right, so we've got properties and we've got like these evil twin properties. So we talk about, they're called inverse properties. So what's the evil twin of addition? Subtraction. Subtraction. Okay, so like addition versus subtraction. Or plusing versus minusing. <laughs> There's another one. Minusing is not a verb either. Okay, don't minus something. Don't you minus that? No. <laughs> You subtract it, but it's five minus three. That's how you say the problem, but minus isn't a verb, okay? See, we're figuring it out. All right, so um, addition versus subtraction. We're gonna learn uh, a little bit later that basically, and I want you to listen closely, subtraction is dumb, okay? So remember that, subtraction is dumb. So really, subtraction is just a really weird addition problem. So you're still combining two numbers together. But what happens when you combine a negative number with a positive number? What happens? It takes away from that, or it subtracts, technically. Okay, so you can, you can never do any subtraction problem again. You might do subtraction, but you never have to do a subtraction problem again. Because five minus three is just the same thing as adding five with negative three. I know it's confusing, we'll talk about it later. Five plus negative three, that's right. Okay, so addition versus subtraction. Those are um, some inverse operations. So if I had this problem here, two plus three equals five, I would say that two, three, and five are all a part of a happy family, and these are called fact families, okay? Are part of what we call a fact family. Because you can form four math problems out of the numbers two, three, and five. What are they? Somebody give me one. Grady? Uh, two plus three equals five. Okay, there's one. What else? Yeah. Five minus three equals two. Five minus three equals two. What else? Yep. Five minus two equals three. Five minus two equals three. And one last one. You got it? You lost it? <laughs> you got it? See, we call that a brain fart, and that's okay. Our brains fart all the time. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. All right, who's got the last one? You got it? Three plus two. There it is. Three plus two equals five. Okay? So, in a fact family, you can form four math problems. Do you have your hand raised? Yeah. Yes. What? Yes, yes, you can. Okay? So here's what we notice um, right here is we can switch these two addition problems around. Five plus three, two plus three, um, or two plus three and three plus two, and they're both going to equal five. Okay? So let's try that. So this is called the commutative property of addition. That's a big word. Commutative property of addition. Basically says two plus three equals five and also three plus two equals the same thing. So you can switch the order of an addition problem and it doesn't affect the answer, okay? Adding five, three plus two is the same thing as adding two plus three, okay? But there's no such thing as commutative property of subtraction because it doesn't work. Five minus three does not equal three minus five. What's three minus five? Negative two. Negative two. That's the opposite of five minus three. So you cannot switch the order of a subtraction problem. Reason number one, that subtraction is dumb, okay? 
Now we also have what's called an identity property, not an identity complex, but identity property of addition is what number do you add to something to maintain its identity? What do you add to something to keep it the same? Um, zero. A zero, okay. So for example, we would say um, a number five plus zero equals five. That remains the same. So zero is the, what we call additive identity. That's what you add to something to keep it the same. But the identity property is any number added to zero remains the same or keeps its identity. So in fancy language, we're gonna say A plus B, because A and B can be whatever number you want, even fractions or whatever, equals B plus A. So that's the commutative property. Identity property would say A plus zero equals A. It stays the same. So far, so good? All right, anyone know what's next? Oh. Okay, it's not what I thought was next, but we're getting there. Okay, now, so after the identity property, well, there's got to be something that you can add to a number that will give you the additive identity, that will give you zero. What can you add to a number? Like, what do you add to five to get zero? Well, first of all, usually what we're used to doing is when you add two numbers together, you get bigger. But how do you get smaller? What do you add to five to get zero? So you either subtract five or you add a negative five or, or, or minus five, okay? So you would, so this is called the identity or the inverse property. Oh, do we even do that? Oh, we're not even gonna talk about that. Well, that was free. So congratulations, you got a free lesson there. So inverse property of addition is basically A plus negative A equals zero. I don't think we talk about it, do we? Do we? No. We're good. Okay, so now this also applies to multiplication. So I could also say this is the same with multiplication. Multiplication. So what's two times three? Six. What's three times two? Six. Okay, so I could also say A times B would equal B times A. So commutative property works for multiplication. Do you think it's gonna work for division? Yeah. No, 12 divided by three does not equal three divided by 12, okay? All right, well, identity property is a little different. So what do you multiply by something to keep it the same? One, so A times one stays the same. So five times one still equals five. So we call one the multiplicative identity. I say that word, multiplicative. Isn't that fun to say? Multiplicative, multiplicative identity. Sounds very distinguished. Multiplicative. <laughs> multiplicative identity. <laughs> Multiplicative identity. We're also going to talk about the multiplicative inverse. Multiplicative inverse is when you flip something over. There's another word for that. It starts with an R. Reverse. Not reverse. What happens when you flip a fraction over? It's called the... Um. Reciprocal. Reciprocal, that's right. I was trying to say it, I just couldn't. It's weird. Okay. So division and subtraction are both dumb, okay? Now you can, you can turn any division problem into a multiplication problem. We're gonna talk about that later. 12 divided by three, you could say 12 divided by three is four, or what do you multiply by 12 to get four? Three. 12 times oh, three would be 36. Oh, yeah. um, 
Yeah, it's a little, a little different. Not quite as easy as the adding the opposite. But you just multiply by the reciprocal. So 12 times one third would equal four. We'll talk about that much later. Don't worry about that right now. But you can eliminate division from your life and subtraction from your life. Division problems and subtraction problems. You might have to subtract some things every once in a while. But as far as you never have to work a subtraction problem again, you can always turn it into an addition problem. Okay, um, but sometimes it's just easier just to subtract because you guys are used to that. All right, so far so good? We're almost done. So we talked about the commutative property of addition and multiplication. You can switch the order. We talked about the identity property of multiplication and division. Okay, there's another property of multiplication that I want to talk about. This is called the property of zero for multiplication. Well, what do you think that property is gonna say? The zero property of multiplication. What does zero do in a multiplication problem? It makes everything zero. Yeah, it just kills everything, doesn't it? For multiplication. So anything times zero equals what? Zero. zero. So the zero property of multiplication is A times zero equals zero. Anything times zero equals zero. Okay, that's the best way to kill a multiplication problem, just multiply it by zero. Okay, so there's two more properties we're going to talk about and then we're done. Okay. Um, there's another property that usually follows the commutative property. If you guys have learned about the commutative property, you've learned about this next property. Do you guys know what it is? is it the yes, the associative property. Okay, so let's do part two of lesson two here. And just like with everything else, it works for addition and multiplication, but it doesn't work for subtraction or division. Okay, for example, uh, let's just well, let's just write it out. Okay, so if I just wrote two plus three plus four. Can you guys do that in your head? Okay, what's the answer? Nine. Nine. What did you do? Did you add two plus three first and then four? Or did you go two plus seven? So two plus seven is nine. So you could say two plus three plus four, or you could say two plus three plus four. Okay, do you see the difference? You don't, do you? It's okay. Let me say it again. Two plus three plus four is the same thing as two plus three plus four. Okay? So you can either do this first, five plus four, or you can do this first. You get nine either way. Awesome. This is called the associative, associative property and it's going to it's going to apply to addition and multiplication okay so here's how i remember it four is feeling a little left out because these guys don't want to associate <laughs> with number four but you know seasons change three really made two mad and like i'm not going to sit with you anymore <laughs> and so now three and four hanging out and two is all by himself so see how this is just a terrible bullying situation here. it's horrible okay so that's the associative property so if you have three or more numbers it doesn't matter what order so it's kind of similar to the commutative property but see how we didn't really add it out of we didn't really switch the order we just decided what to add first so if you have two addition problems in the same problem it doesn't matter what you do first. Same thing with multiplication. So if I have A plus B 
plus C, that has to equal A plus B plus C. Or A times B times C has to equal A times B times C. So it kind of depends on where you put your parentheses. Remember, parentheses always go first. Order of operations, you guys know that? Parentheses? This is a good rule in life. Always P first. It's a good rule. Everywhere you go, if you go on a long road trip, P first. If you go to a movie, P first. If you do math, P first. Parentheses first. Okay? All right. Hopefully you'll remember that. Okay, so... Um, it doesn't work for a subtraction. Let's try this. Let's try 10 minus 8 minus 2. Okay, let's see if that equals 10 minus 8 minus 2. What's 10 minus 8? 2. What's 2 minus 2? 0. Zero. What's, what's 8 minus 2? 6. What's 10 minus 6? Four, four. No, it doesn't work. Okay, isn't that weird? Is anyone else weirded out by that? Why wouldn't that work? It doesn't. So order matters. So when you're doing this problem without parentheses, you have to go left to right, okay? If there's parentheses, parentheses, C, 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 in there, then you have to do parentheses first. But if you're just, if you're just doing this problem, you have to go left to right or you're gonna get the problem wrong. In addition, if this was 10 plus 8 plus 2, you can add whatever you want whenever you want in that problem. It doesn't matter. But when you're subtracting, you have to go left to right. Okay, we good, good there? Associative property, you good, good on that? So what's the other property? It starts with a C? Communicative. Commuti commutative, that's right. Um, the way I remember that is my commute to work is the same as if I reverse it. So I'm going the same distance back. Actually, I'm going shorter because there was an accident on, on C470 this morning. I'll just take the opposite one. Yeah, so I, I, I could. Just to be symmetrical, I'm going to go back the same way. Yeah, that'll make me feel better. Okay, so uh, associative property. Now, one more thing we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a sequence. There's like a game called sequence. Do you guys know that game? Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, it's been a while. I don't like games because I'm competitive and then I get grumpy <laughs> and then I don't like people. So, Dude, if, you should see my family. Another game, Spoons? Yeah, that's You face brutal. them outwards and you slap them and then you pretty much fight for them. Yeah, yeah, that's, I've, I've witnessed that. I don't play that. Not because I'm afraid, but because I don't want to lose. Yes. Um, are there sequences like when there are numbers like. Two, five, and then eight, and it's basically you're adding yeah. one number. I love it because you have to figure out the pattern and then figure out the next one. Okay, I love it's like a puzzle. All right, well, when we were listing the counting numbers one, two, three, but well, that's an easy sequence, you're just adding one, right? But this is just a sequence, is just an ordered list of numbers that follow a certain pattern or sequence. Okay, so um, obviously here's our first boring example. That's a sequence and you'll see an ellipses on the end. Did we talk about ellipses? Oh, it seems so long ago. Remember talking about, did I do this? Yes. Okay. Wow. Seems like years ago when we talked about it. We're so older now. That's great. Okay. So there's a sequence, a boring one, but there's a sequence. Here's a little less boring. What's going to be the next one in that sequence? 10. 10. So those are just even numbers. So you're just adding two, right? Okay, what about, um, you could do these, one, three. Usually it's like an addition. How much do you add to something to get to the next one? So what's the next one? 10. No, no. Oh, this, not nine. this one, but this one. Oh. There you go. So then it's going to be nine. So they, those are odd numbers. Um, let's, let's get a little tricky here. You ready? Think you can handle this? 
See if you can figure out the next number in this sequence. So your job is to study and apply. So you have to study, try to figure out the pattern, apply the pattern to figure out the next number. That just looks cool. Study and apply. It's like you're a secret agent. I don't know. Maybe not. Okay, ready? You ready? Yeah. One, four, nine, 16, 25. What's the next one? <laughs> Do you know? 30? Not 30. Isn't this fun? It's not 30. It's not 30. Oh, uh, uh, it's, uh, what? Wait, I thought it got it. I just had it. What's going through your head? How are you how are you figuring this out? Um, What'd you do well, first? We added well I added the three to make All Right, so you add three, but what do you add here? Seven. You add five. Add five. And what do you add here? To seven. What do you and add nine. here? So oh. what are you gonna add oh. to this? Um, oh, you added it's seven. um it's so thirty six. That's right. <laughs> it's oh. your thunder. I had okay. this in my mind, but it's just like I missed the 11. <laughs> All right. Does anyone else know this sequence? Do you guys know what this secret sequence represents? Um, what is one? Do you, do you know what this symbol is? Yes. It means multiply it by itself, right? Mm -hmm. What's one squared? Well, that's just one times itself, which is one, right? What's two squared? Oh, my. Six. Not way more. What's three squared? Nine. What's four squared? Sixteen. What's five squared? Twenty-five. What's six squared? Thirty-six. What's the next one going to be? Uh, seven squared? Eighty-nine. Forty-nine. Eighty-one. Uh, or sixty-four, and then eighty-one, and then a hundred. Okay, so isn't that weird that all the, these are called squares or they're called perfect squares in math, but they're just odd numbers apart. So you're just increasing that sequence. So you can imagine when you get to the hundredth perfect square, you're adding quite a lot of, of, to that next one, right? We're gonna talk about squares and square roots later, but that's an interesting pattern, but sometimes it helps like you guys were all trying to do it in your head, but as soon as I started writing down the intervals, interval is how far apart numbers are, then you say, oh, I see it, I see the pattern. So you learn it and then you apply the next one. Isn't that cool? It's like a puzzle. I saw the pattern, but I-